the oracles of God television to get the eternal gospel of Jesus Christ right out of Africa. So this morning we are looking at some demonstrations of faith in the Bible. Let's look at the story of the three lepers at the gate of Samaria. 2 Kings chapter 7 verses 4 to 8. This was a time of famine in Samaria. The famine was so bad, the Bible says great famine, that you know what, they, were eating, they started eating each other's children. And then there were these four lepers at the gate of Samaria. They said to themselves, Why sit we here till we die? Okay? They said, If we go to the city, we will die there. If we sit still here, we will die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. They sat down and they analyzed the situation. They came to the conclusion, if we stay here, we are going to die. If we go into the city, we are going to die. But if we go into the camp of the Syrians, they might live. They might spare our lives. They might also kill us. But then, they have a chance of being kept alive. And you know what happened? They decided to move. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Five. And they rose up in the twilight. Twilight, very early in the morning. Praise the Lord. They rose up in the twilight. And then they started moving. When they came to the uttermost camp of Syria, behold, what happened? There was no man there. Let's go to verse 6. See what happened. The Lord had made the host of Syrians to hear a noise of chariots, a noise of horses, and the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had heard against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come against us. Praise the Lord. Let's go to verse 7. Wherefore they arose. At what time? That same twilight. Praise the Lord. What is God telling us this morning? If you do not move in your faith, you are not going to get results. If they had sat down there, after analyzing, and then they decided to sit down there, what would have happened? They would have surely died. For some of us, we sit down and we analyze our situations. That's the level we're stopping. We have analyzed the budget. We have analyzed our pockets. We have analyzed the economy. We have analyzed, we have analyzed the stock market. And we have analyzed our bank accounts. When we finish analyzing, we have come to the conclusion. <laughs> this project is not feasible. So we will sit there and die there financially. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Without knowing that God had gone ahead of them to curse these people at that same hour, if they had not moved, they would never have experienced or known what the Lord had done. They heard a host, chariots, great hosts. The noise was frightening. Chariots and horses. You know how it sounds when many chariots and horses are moving together and the noise of a great host. Supernatural noise. And those ones ran away. By the time they got to that place, there was nobody to kill them. Praise the Lord. They met abundance. You will move forward in your faith in Jesus' name. You will not analyze. After all your analysis, you just sit back. Because you have come to the conclusion there is nothing that can be done. Let's be realistic. Pastor Ladi says, let's be godistic. <laughs> we will not be realistic. We shouldn't be realistic. We should be godistic in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. They rose early in the morning. You will rise up early in Jesus' name. 
You remember Gideon in the Bible? The Bible tells us that Gideon went in the night. There's something about getting up or going where your enemies are relaxed. And you know what happened? When Gideon went in the night, this is Gideon that was afraid for so long. The Midianites have been terrorizing them. And so when God called him mighty man of valor, said move, he moved in the night. And you know what? When he went to the camp of the Midianites, he heard them talking about how fearful they are of the person that was afraid of them. He said, the God of this people is too much. He's the one that fights for them. They don't go to battle alone. Anytime they go to any battle, God defeats Gideon said, wow. So these are the people that we were afraid of. God had gone ahead of them. God has gone ahead of you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You are doing yourself a disservice not to move. You know how it is sometimes we see these doors, and what do you call them? These doors that part, the closer you walk to them. Automatic doors. That's how our faith is. When you, or, so you get to a certain point, you may not have known what the Lord has already prepared ahead of you. Praise the Lord. The Lord has gone ahead of us and he has prepared something for us. But we need to make that move of faith. If you don't make that move of faith, you will never know what the Lord has done for us. Praise the Lord. And you know what the king said? When they told the king what had happened, the king now went and sent horses he said, let us send the only few horses that we have. Because the horses are like the children of Israel, famished. He said, let us send these horses. When they sent the few horses they had, guess what? By the time they went to the camp of the Syrians, those ones had abandoned gold, silver, horses. Everything was in excess. And the word of the Lord, that by this time tomorrow, there will be so much abundance. What happened? Did it come to pass or not? It came to pass. It will come to pass in our lives in Jesus' name. But there is something that God wants us to bring out of this story. You remember the man on whose arm the king used to lean? That man said, even if God opens the windows of heaven, shall this thing happen? How can it happen? That's the way some of us reason. That man doubted. You know what Elisha said to him? He said, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. Because of doubt. We said faith is not doubt. He was wondering. You know once you start wondering. How is God going to do it? You know doubt has already come in. Is it your responsibility? How God will do it? Praise the Lord. You said how will he do it? If God opens the windows of heaven. How is it going to happen? Ha! Elisha said. You will see. But you will not partake. And you know what happened the next day? The king said, okay, you go to the gate and man the gate. Of course, the breakthrough was too much for people. There was a stampede. Everybody was rushing. And what happened to that man? Only people in the palace will know what happened. Other people will say, hey, yeah, he just died. They ran on him and he died. They wouldn't know it was his doubt. They would just say it is the breakthrough, it was too much. So doubt will deprive us, but we will not let doubt in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. God said, I am the one that will fulfill my word. Isaiah 55, 11. He says, so shall my words be that come out of my mouth. They will not return void, but it shall do what? Accomplish. And prosper in the thing that it has been sent. So God is telling you and I, forget about the responsibility of how I will fulfill my word. Your own responsibility is to do what? To believe. Amen? When you believe, what will happen? God will do what he wants to do. The same thing happened when the children of Israel were supposed to go to Jericho. Some of us are familiar with the story. When they went to Jericho to spy, you know what we have said to them? He said, we have heard so much about your God. The children of Israel have, the children, the, the, the Jebusites, all those people that were occupying Jericho, he said, they are so afraid of you. We have heard so much about your God. He fights for his people. These are the people that they would ordinarily have been afraid of. 
You know, God has already gone ahead to put his fear in the hearts of the people that his children were going to have to overcome in order to possess their inheritance. If they had not stepped out, they would not have had that privileged information. When they stepped out, go and spy on the land. And you know what happened? He said, we've heard about your God so much that the hearts of the occupants of this city is failing them because of what they have heard the Lord will help us to understand in Jesus name praise the Lord and so what did Rahab do the Bible tells us Rahab demonstrated her faith if Rahab had not believed that the God of Israel was the true God why would she put her family on the line she helped them and she said when you come back to take the city please this is the sign those ones said put a sign scarlet by your window so that when we come back what will happen we will be able to identify your house praise the Lord we have demonstrated her faith ok I believe that God is the true God the God of Israel is the authentic God are we saying something and then she decided to help them she believed and she demonstrated her faith by helping them if Rahab had believed and she did not help them to accommodate them when they came that is not faith amen so God is talking to us this morning year 2018 is a year of action in Jesus name you will take both steps of faith in the name of Jesus Christ let's look at another demonstration of faith in the New Testament the healing of the man with palsy Matthew chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 he said and he entered into a ship and passed over okay fantastic they, they brought to him a man sick of palsy lying on a bed and Jesus seeing their faith Jesus must see your faith Jesus must see your faith praise the Lord when Jesus saw their faith he said be of good cheer your sins are forgiven Okay, and then he now talked to the man and he said, Let's go to verse 6. Did you see that? Arise, take up thy bed, and go to thine house. That scripture demonstrates the two levels of faith. They demonstrated their faith, the action they took, in spite of the fact that the room that Jesus was occupying was filled with people. They refused to be stopped, they went through the roof. When Jesus saw their faith, he now spoke and he obeyed the instructions. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 8, the same thing. Peter said, we have tried all night and we have caught nothing. And Jesus said, launch out to the right for a drought. He gave them directions. So what is God telling us? Praise the Lord. When you don't know the step of faith that you need to take, the next step of faith, ask God for direction. Amen? Ask God and He will give you that direction in Jesus' name. We'll quickly run through the things that we have to do when we are asking God for directions or wisdom. We have to ask in faith. Psalm 85 verse 8 says, David said, the Lord will speak. God always speaks. Come approaching God knowing that he always speaks. He will definitely give you that direction. Amen. Because as far as God is concerned, giving his children guidance is a covenant. Amen. He has covenanted to guide us. James 1.5 says, let him ask in faith. If you're asking God for wisdom, direction, ask in faith. Don't doubt, don't waver. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when you are waiting for that direction, pray in the Spirit. Amen? Pray in the Spirit. And the Lord will give you interpretation in Jesus' name. The scriptures are 1 Corinthians 2, 7, 1 Corinthians 14, 2. You can read those scriptures later. Pray in the Spirit. Take time to pray in the Spirit. As you pray in the Spirit, certain scriptures will come to you. Certain thoughts will come to you. Praise the Lord. 
praise the living God. Number three, still under how to get directions from God. Ask God for revelation knowledge of his word. Revelation knowledge. The Bible says, the letter kill it. It is a spirit that gives life. Majority of us in the church, we have the letter of the word. We don't have revelation knowledge. And that's why there is no progress as we ought to experience. We know these scriptures before we even complete it. In fact, if I start certain scriptures, the whole house will complete it for me. Praise the Lord. But it takes revelation knowledge for us to experience. Because the letter kill it. The letter you can have knowledge, mental knowledge of that word, but it will not profit you. Amen. It is revelation knowledge because revelation automatically brings light to our spirit man. Are we saying something? Once it comes, you know what happens to darkness? Darkness recedes. You say, oh yes, this is what God is talking about. I can now see what this scripture means. I've read it for so long and yet I couldn't quite understand. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, nations will come of me. Kings will be born of me. Amen. When the Bible says the blessings of the breast and blessings of the womb, God is telling us about unusual children. Geniuses. Amen. You say, ah, what is blessing of the breast? The one day you just realize God had promised Abraham kings will be born of him. Nations will be born of him. Amen. And you begin to bless the Lord that the blessings of your womb Kings are being born of you in Jesus' name. Nations are being born of you in Jesus' name. Geniuses are being born of you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. That's revelation knowledge. And as you confess it consistently, that is exactly what will happen to the fruits of your womb in Jesus' name. Because God has given you unusual blessings. These are covenant blessings of the womb. But it comes with revelation knowledge. Are we saying something? Revelation knowledge can come through meditation. Joshua 1.8 Revelation knowledge can come through meditation. The Bible tells us clearly in Joshua 1.8 that you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. By what? The word of God. So anytime you are engaging the word of God in any endeavor, your success is guaranteed. Are we saying something? You have already made your way prosperous. Your success is guaranteed because that effort that you're making, you're making it based on God's word. Amen. You are focusing on the word of God. Whatever the word of God says concerning your endeavors, that is your focus. That's the meditation. And when you meditate, a lot of times, revelation knowledge will come to us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Finally, in your work of faith, you must carry God along. During the week, we talked about several examples. If you have faith, can you add it with some wisdom that we know is not necessarily from God's word? Praise the Lord. Say somebody wants to go to U.S. or London. You know the wisdom of the world. If you find a woman in U.S. or London to marry her, what will happen? She will give you papers. You say this is wisdom from above. No. Praise the Lord. Say, so just get the papers. When you get the papers, you can divorce her. That's not wisdom. Maybe the woman is genuinely interested in the marriage. She doesn't have such plans of divorce after one month or one year. Amen. So God is telling us, carry me along. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 says, Acknowledge the Lord. How many times? In all your ways. What will happen? Proverbs 3 6 Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. What will happen? He will direct your path. Carry God along. Amen. Just keep communicating with God. God, this is what I want to do. Which area do I go to? The Bible says in, I think, Psalm 47, verse 3, the Lord will choose our inheritance. God chose the children of Israel's inheritance for them. So carry God along. That you want to buy a car, you want to buy a house, whatever you want to do, send your children to school, you must acknowledge God. And he will direct your paths in Jesus' name. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are what? 
You see what? They are ordered of the Lord. Don't assume anything. Praise the Lord. Carry God along. Let God order your steps from one level to the other. But don't say God has not spoken, you will not move. You will move and the Lord will order your steps in Jesus' name. Proverbs 16.3 It says, Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Carry God alone in 2018. Involve God in all your plans. You can also visit us online at www.lwuc.org or be our friend on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Living Waters Unlimited or follow us on Twitter at LWUC or at Oracles or you can watch us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Living Waters Unlimited Church. We proclaim blessings on all our friends and partners for supporting this outreach.